Hello guys, my name is Isaac and I am a lighting and environment artist here at Quixel Epic. This is the final video in my three video series on this abandoned apartment scene. And just as promised, this video will be completely dedicated to my lighting workflow. I will take you through how I generally approach lighting a scene like this, both from an um, artistic and a technical point of view. Do keep in mind, however, that lighting is a really, really vast subject, so I won't, of course, be able to cover everything in this video, but I've kind of singled out the aspects I think are the most important, and if you have any follow-up questions or want to see a more in-depth video in the future, be sure to write that in the comments. So, let's dive in! Just as I mentioned in my first video, I start planning my lighting very early in the design process. When I start work working on a new project, I try to identify the most dominant aspects of the lighting scenario that I'm going to be working with. And for this project, it was really quite straightforward. Since it's an abandoned apartment, I'm probably not going to be able to work with any artificial light sources. So that leaves me with the skylight and the directional light. And what this tells us is that we are going to be, have to be a little bit more mindful about where we place the openings in uh, the ceilings and walls. Here you can see my first draft of the scene in Unreal is way too dark. So I decided to cave in the roof to allow for more light to come in and, you know, clear out the windows a little bit so we can get some more illumination from that. I also placed the ceiling tiles in the hallway so I could move those around and make sure that enough light could come into the hallway and not have everything be completely black. I mean, if the scene is becoming too dark, you can always place an extra fill light in there if you want to, but I prefer to save fill lights and stuff like that until I'm starting to do my actual renders. Normally I start out with only baking the skylight, because it's really important to get the ambient light to a good level before you start adding anything else. And once the skylight is uh, kind of where I want it to be, I add in the directional light. And apart from adding illumination, the directional light is a really great way to kind of highlight the, uh, the core features of your scene. Like, for, for example, I knew the football here would be like the centerpiece of the scene. So I, I needed to make sure that the sunlight kind of hit that in an interesting way. And you know, start. I started uh, experimenting with different lighting setups uh, in regards to like mood and weather and stuff like that as well. And here, just like with the concept art, speed is really key. You just need to get some different kind of lighting scenarios down on, down on paper so you could get a good overview and then you can start finalizing it uh, later on in the process. I also did some experimenting with different GI solutions. I tried a simple baked GI, the SSGI and the ray trace GI, and every single of those techniques are really, really amazing, even though they of course have their own individual drawbacks. But in the end, I chose to go for a simple baked solution because I wanted the frame rate to be uh, as good as possible. Another little lighting feature I just want to give some special attention here are the ray traced shadows. Here you can see the vanilla raster shadows with a long uh, contact shadow, and now you can see the difference in fidelity between the uh, ray traced shadows I'm using here. And ray traced shadows also has the ability to blur the umbra and penumbra of a shadow in a really realistic way, which really adds a lot to your scene. So if you have the ability to try it out, you really should. Once the lighting is kind of where I want it to be, um, I start working with a camera. I always use the cine camera because then I can simulate different lenses. And when I take photos in real life, I always shoot with a fixed lens of 35 or 30 or maybe 50 millimeter. And I tend to use the same kind of lenses in Unreal as well. Being able to use the cameras in Unreal in the same way as you would use a camera in real life is a really valuable tool. It enables you to become kind of a digital cinematographer of your own world. Once I've settled on a few uh, camera angles, I start making lighting improvements and start working with uh, post-processing and grading just to get the most out of every single shot. 
Now, had I approached this scene from a more cinematic point of view, I would have placed rim lights and fill lights all over the place just to bring out the crispness of every single shot. But I wanted this scene to be more of a 360 scene so you could view it from any angle you want without it being constrained to one specific camera shot. So apart from a few fill lights here and there, I kept it quite clean. As an example, in a few of my shots I realized that I needed the ambient light coming in from the collapsed part of the roof to be a bit more intense. So instead of having to re-bake the lighting, which would take a long time uh, just to re-record that shot, I just placed a simple rectangular light and turned up the, the light intensity a little bit. And you can see for the tarp I did the same thing. I thought that part of the scene became a little too dark in some of the shots, so I just decided to add uh, a couple of small lights to give everything a bit of a blue tint. And you can all, uh, you know, delete those lights if you want to, or if you want to keep them, but save on performance, you could just bake them down. I mean, it's really up to you. I built the scene so that it, it looks as good as possible without those lights, but I still wanted to leave them in so that I would kind of make sure to demystify my, my lighting workflow uh, so that everything is as true as possible to the final renders that you guys uh, see. Also for my renders, I used the ray traced reflection and to get rid of the noise when I have very few samples, I tend to bump it up to like 10 or 15 so that we get a really smooth and, and clear reflection. I do the same thing for the ray tracing on the skylight since it tends to be quite noisy uh, in low light environments with only one or two samples. I bump that up to like 10 or 15 when I do renders. Both of these things uh, really destroys the performance but when you're doing renders you don't have to care about that so you can just bump it up to whatever looks nice and then you can adjust it if you want it to run at a decent FPS. And that's it for my final video on this abandoned apartment scene. I really hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you have any questions or maybe suggestions for what you would like to see in one of our next tutorials, be sure to write those in the video comments. And I hope to see you all next time!